What's up, brothers and sisters in Christ? I'm Colton Kelly from Seeking Wisdom Ministries, and I just praise God for today, another day that we have woke up in this world, though we're not of this world, but we have another day to breathe and grow in Christ. And the Lord really put this message uh, together through me as His vessel, but the Holy Spirit lives inside of us if we are born again. And He wants me to speak to those who are His, to those who are growing in Him, growing pains. This is the title of the video, Growing Pains. What are growing pains? Do we expect to go through pain in this world as we're walking as sojourners, as temporary residents of this world, and how we can reflect God in these last days because Jesus Christ is coming soon. That is a fact. I know this to be true because His Word tells us and shows us prophecies that His Word is the Word of God. And many prophetic events have been coming to pass, especially uh, the days that we live in now. It's very wicked. Um, holiness is deteriorating and, and wickedness is growing like a nasty cancer. But God has his faithful remnant. God is faithful and he has a peculiar people set apart for good works, for his glory, and for his will to be accomplished. Uh, but I'm going to teach the word of God today. So if you guys are hungry uh, and you're thirsty for righteousness... Those who, who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. And I just am going to start in prayer because this is his word and this is holy. His word is holy. God is holy. So let's have a fear of God and, and really, really uh, try to ask God to fill us with understanding that we may comprehend the scriptures. Because guys, the reality is we could read his word inside and out. But until we humble ourselves and ask of God, Lord, show us open our understanding that we may truly get to know you and walk and worship you in spirit and in truth. I mean, we could totally miss out on what God has for those who truly love him and hunger and thirst after righteousness. Uh, Jesus himself said, those who eat of my flesh, those who, those who do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. So let's eat of his word, which is the bread of life. Let's drink of the spirit of God, his blood that he shed for everyone. Okay. No one is excluded. But you have a decision, you have a choice, you have a free will as a human being, as a free creature to choose to follow Christ or to choose to be your own God, make your own decisions as Adam and Eve at the beginning decided they wanted to know what is righteous and what is wrong instead of trusting in God by faith. Faith is how we're saved. So how do we become born again? Okay, let's go to his word real quick. First, if you guys can see this pretty clearly, hopefully you guys can. First, you become born again. That is how you enter into the kingdom in the spirit realm. God had became man in the flesh. He lived the perfect life, the sinless lamb of God that was slain on our behalf, the atonement for our sins. We are only saved by the blood of the lamb, nothing else. But there is differences that the Lord wants me to show you that he showed me that I can share with you guys so that we can have a deeper understanding. Okay, born again, water and spirit. This is how we enter the blood covenant with God himself. So we see Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he's talking to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So Nicodemus right there is going into the carnal mindset, which is an enemy of God. Okay, it cannot please God. Why do I say that? Because he's thinking carnally instead of spiritually. He's thinking, okay, how can a man be born when he is old and go a second time into his mother's womb? And Jesus, he's so wise. He answers and doesn't even really directly answer him. He just says this. He says, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Mm. We need to understand what is being born of water and of spirit. Water is your blood covenant with God when you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. The word baptism itself, okay, means to be fully submerged under water. And we there's only one name under heaven where my whereby men must be saved. That is the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's only one God in whom we serve, and Jesus is the Son of God, in which the Godhead bodily, the Spirit of God, dwelled in. 
So there's no other saving name. Not Buddha, not Allah, not any new age religion. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If we don't understand the basics of the doctrine of Christ, we will be tossed to and fro. We will be deceived as many people in this world are today. But if you truly humble yourself as a child, read his word, you will be saved. That is a promise of God if we become born again. Okay, so let's go down a little bit. Then um, the spirit is receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand water and of spirit. So when we receive the gift, it's a gift. We couldn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But don't miss, don't misinterpret that as we can continue to, okay, when we come as we are, everybody can come as you are with all your sin, okay? But you don't stay as you are. God wants to change you. God wants to transform you. How do we be transformed? Well, by the renewing of our mind, by the washing of the word, and by the gift of of the Holy Spirit because when you receive the Spirit you receive power you become born again of of you're gone with the old life and you're in with the new you are either dead to sin or you're dead in your sin but Christ came to take away the works of the enemy to destroy the works of the enemy so unless we're born of water and of spirit Jesus himself is saying verily verily when he says verily verily when God himself says verily verily we better pay attention unless we are born of water and of spirit we can never enter in the kingdom of God Okay, this is the blood covenant of God that we need to take seriously. All right. Now, when we're born of water, when we're baptized in Jesus' name, okay, and when we receive the gift of his Holy Spirit to walk in the newness of life, walking after the Spirit of God instead of the flesh, which is what we want, okay, it's our mind, will, and emotions, that's our soul, okay, but when we are fully filled with the Spirit of God, we are justified, okay? But let us continue. What do we need to do to continue to continue? Because we're being saved daily, guys. We're being saved daily. But we need to understand the maturing process. This is what it means when then you start the maturing process as you die to your old self daily. 1 Corinthians 15.31 says, I protest by rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. That is a key right here. I die daily, Paul is declaring. He doesn't just die, I die on the Sabbath only. I die on Sundays as a Christian only. I go to church and, you know, I'll put Jesus Christ in my pocket on Sunday. Or, no, no, I'll, go, I'll bring out Jesus out of my pocket on Sunday, but then put him back in my pocket each and every day of the week because I want to live as my old self because Jesus died for my sins, right? You haven't misinterpreted Jesus came to destroy the work of the enemy and sin in your life. And he wants you to become born again of water and of spirit. Obedience. In baptism, you are dying with Christ. In baptism. And then you arise to new, newness of life when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Which order you do so does not matter, obviously, because in Acts 10, Cornelius was a Gentile. He received the gift of the Holy Ghost as long as uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit with his whole household. And then he was ordered to go be baptized, fully submerged underwater in the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Not in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, Matthew 28, 18, when Jesus is saying that, he's saying, go and baptize. He's talking about himself. Go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus Christ is that name revealed. It says in Isaiah, a son is born and his, a, a name is given in his the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name is Prince of Peace, Mighty Counselor, Everlasting Father. Okay? So we need to understand the key is in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 4.12. All right, let's continue. As we die and we mature in Christ and we're starting to actually learn God by reading his word, by praying, by fasting, okay? Because if we don't fast, we're going to be held down by the weight of sin, by the weight of this world, and by the temptations, okay? We need to fast. Now, fasting is not just... Fasting from the internet, fasting from, you know, that or this or that. The other. It is fasting and denying yourself food. So let's continue and look in 1 Peter 4.12 and 4.19 real quick. Uh, this is the testing of our faith when we go through the trials of this world, when we're the temporary residents, but we have an eternal home to look forward to. Let's look what 1 Peter 4.12 through 19 says. Beloved Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing is happening to you. Don't think it strange, guys. When you have trials and tribulations in this world, that is a promise. But rejoice in so as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Whoa. Wait, so we're supposed to rejoice when we're suffering? 
Yes, because you're partaking in the sufferings of Christ. That's a beautiful thing. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Can you believe that when you are being persecuted for the righteousness sake of Christ, God is being glorified in your life. So be encouraged, be, be uplifted, and, 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 and be excited and rejoice when you are being persecuted for the name of Christ. Because there's the day coming, and he's being glorified in your life. When we will see him face to face is what I was saying. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. So there's a clear separation. None of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other man's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what shall be the end of they that obey not the gospel? Mm. Okay, guys, we really need to understand this. It, obedience is key. When you love Jesus Christ and you realize what he had to go through and what he did for you, what, why wouldn't you obey God? That's the question that baffles me. Oh, but obedience doesn't save us. Well, why does the word of God say right here, what shall be the end of them who obey not the gospel of God? You can hear the word in the gospel all day long and you can say, oh yeah, I believe in the gospel. But what about if you don't obey the word of God? Don't be just hearers deceiving your own selves, as James says, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. What's the point? I mean, really, guys, really think about it. God himself died, and he resurrected on the third day. He came to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit because God is so holy, he, he cannot dwell in a, in, a, in a temple that is filthy of flesh. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us. And we are made right in God's sight so he can fully dwell in us. But if we continue to suffer, ready, as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters, okay, don't suffer in that way. God, God doesn't want to dwell in an unclean temple. You know when Jesus Christ, he was under a tree and he was, what was he braiding? He was braiding something for a very long time, a whip. Because when he took that whip and he went into the temple, okay, the church in that day, he whipped and he flipped tables and he says, why have you made my father's house a den of thieves? God does not want to dwell in something that is unclean. We are only made right in God's sight by the blood of the lamb. But if we continue living in the flesh and not obeying God, why do we think that God's just going to look at us and be like, oh yeah, yeah, you're, you're okay. You can come into my, my kingdom. It's not a works, but it's faith. And when you love God, you will obey him. But what about those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous are scarcely saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Where they are going to appear, I don't know. Hell, separated from God. Wherefore, let them suffer according to the will of God. Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing. So how do we c commit to God? Well, keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. God is faithful. God will meet you where you are, but he doesn't want to keep you where you are. He do, if you, you can come as you are with all your sin, but does God want to keep you in your sin? No. God wants to take you. He wants to now let you know that you have an Abba, you have a Father, in which he wants to clean you by the renewing of your mind daily, by the washing of the Word and the renewing of the Holy Spirit inside of you. So don't reject God and the convictions that he gives you because he is holy. Let's continue. So you start to grow in holiness. That is a key to the kingdom. Holiness. Guys, we really need to understand holiness. Holiness is very important. It's the Holy Spirit who wants to dwell in you as a free gift by paid and purchased by the blood of the Lamb. We are only saved by the blood of the Lamb. I don't know why people think that I'm saying works and works and works. No, we're only saved by the blood of the Lamb. But you need to understand this though. You can reject God's convictions. And you can get to a point where you sear your conscience with a hot iron and you push away the correction of the Lord. God chastises those he loves. He doesn't want to keep you where you are. He wants to grow you in maturity. That is a key. But if you disobey and you reject him over and over and over, you're an instrument of unrighteousness. God cannot continue to dwell in someone who's disobedient. It says the wrath of God is upon the disobedient children. Let's continue to grow. That's where disobedience determines 
salvation, okay? You can disobey God enough to where you reject him. All right. First Peter 1 Peter 1.15-17. through 17. But as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. See this word? This is the key. Conversation. What is that? That's a King James word, an uh, old-fashioned word in the old times that literally means in this definition, lifestyle. Okay, so God is saying, I'm holy. I'm the one who called you. So you better be holy in all manner of lifestyle. But how many people, why do you call so many, why do you look at so many professing Christians, but they're still so unholy? Okay, yeah, they come to Christ. Come as you are. If you've got a lot of baggage, it's okay. God wants to clean you up. But it, it, it comes down to the where it gets the salvation issue if you continue to reject God when he's saying, don't do those things. Don't do those things. Hey, I don't want you to be smoking weed anymore. I called you to a higher living. God will have mercy on you to a certain point. But God only knows where you will not continue to follow his commandments. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Right there in the command. That God says, be ye holy. It's a command. For I am holy. Okay? The power to live holy is possible. How? Well, God, it's right there in the command. When Jesus said, God himself said, let there be light. And there was light. Same right here. Be ye holy. Command. For I am holy. And he's able by the power of the Holy Spirit, not for you, not of flesh works, not something you can do, because no flesh is going to glory in the God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of the creator of the heavens. There's nobody going to be able to say, hey, I saved myself. I'm able to do this because of my flesh and my power. No, it is God's grace through faith that he gives you the power to live and please him by the blood of Jesus Christ in which he purchased you. You are not your own life anymore. You are to live as a living sacrifice. See, do you know in the old times, in the Old Testament, they used to take a dead sacrifice and give it to the Lord as a burnt offering and lay it at the altar. But guess what? They had to continue to do this over and over and over again because the burnt offering was not enough to cleanse them. But the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, was able to. And the Holy Spirit can move in your life. But you have to continue in holiness. It says, follow peace and holiness with all men. And without holiness, no one's going to see the Lord. And if ye call on the Father, who without respects of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of sojourning here in fear. While you're in earth, guys, it's saying, okay, God doesn't judge anybody on, on persons in the sense, he's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't say, oh, that person can't, that person can't. He says, everybody, come as you are. Okay, and I will give you the gift of my Holy Spirit. But many people reject that gift of righteousness. Okay, and he judgeth according to every man's work. But I'm not saved by works. Yeah, but you're going to be judged by your work. What you, what, what you know and what you don't know, there's, how, there's accountability. With much is given, much is required. When you start to grow in God and you start, like, like a child, like a baby, okay? Um, parents who want to start raising their kids and instruct them in righteousness, okay? They're going to have, the older they get, more responsibilities. So when you grow in God and you first become born again, you're not expected to become just, oh yeah, you're holy. No, it's a time. It's it, it's it's a growing process of sanctification and maturity. But but a two-year-old, a father's not going to ask a two-year-old, oh, hey, go take out the trash. Because that two-year-old is about the same height as the trash. How is he going to do that? But when he grows up and when he turns like an old enough to be able to do it, 14 years old, hey, go do it. Uh, the father expects the, the child who is supposedly 14 years old to be able to go and take out the trash. There's more responsibility. Okay. But if we never grow up, how are we ever going to know? Let's continue to go. Justification. There's three things. There's justification, there's sanctification, and there's glorification. We're going to go through all three real quick. Justification by faith. Saved from the penalty of sin. Justification is saved from the penalty of sin. To where sin, you don't, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Okay, so when you sin, you deserve eternal hellfire. Okay. But guess what? You're justified by the blood of the Lamb. So God will not hold that sin to your account. Praise the Lord. Born again of water and of spirit, as we read in John 3. 1 Corinthians 6.11 says, And such were some of you, but you were washed. But you were sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Wow. So washed and sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the spirit of our God. Born of water and of spirit. Washed. Baptism in Jesus name. Filled with the spirit of God. 
that is when you start and then you become sanctified ready titus 3 7 says that being justified by his grace alone okay grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life romans 5 1 therefore we're being justified by faith we have peace with with god our through our lord jesus christ galatians 3 24 wherefore Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ that we might be justified by faith. The law was given so we could see, whoa, we're in need of a Savior. We're going to go to hell if we don't have a Savior. Who's going to save us? Not the law. The law is to show us, whoa, we are in need of someone. So Christ came to fulfill the law, but not to abolish, to fulfill that we may be justified by faith. Let's continue. Sanctification. So we see that justification is saved from the penalty of sin. What is sanctification? Saved from the power of sin. And this is a daily thing. This is why Paul says, I die to myself daily. I die to myself daily. We have to continue to be in the fear of God as we are temporary residents in this world. Walking in wisdom. Walking in truth. Walking in spirit. Leading after the work and the Holy Spirit that leads us under the path of eternal life through Jesus Christ alone. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of our peace sanctify you wholly. See, Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, is different than H-O-L-Y. Holy, the definition H-O-L-Y, is to be set apart. Okay, but not just to be set apart. It is to be set apart and grabbed onto something. You are set apart from this world, and you are grabbed onto the Spirit of God, who is holy. But this right here is the very God of peace sanctify you holy. That means your whole body, mind, will, soul, and emotion. Okay? And I will pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. So we need to be sanctified? Yes. You need to be sanctified by the glory and the power of God. Okay? God will sanctify you, not yourself. You're a piece of dirt. You're a piece of flesh, man. But God wants to set you free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. Now is this making all sense? I pray to God someone is understanding this. Um, spirit, soul, and body. Wow. So now we have justification saved from the penalty of sin, sanctification saved from the power of sin, and then glorification. Wow. This is going to be a beautiful day. We're never going to ever be tempted again because glorification is saved from the very presence of sin. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal body must put on immorality. So then, so in this corruptible shall we have put on incorruption, uh, and this mortal shall have put on immorality. And shall be brought to pass the saying as it is written, risen, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, sting, O oh, grave, where is thy victory? So when you are glorified into your new glorified bodies and raptured up, either the dead in Christ rise first, and then those who are left and remain shall be caught up and to meet the Lord in the air. You are set free from the very presence of sin, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But right now, we're in the middle. You're, if you are born again, okay, you're and you're still alive on this earth, and you're not raptured up yet like me, I'm not raptured up yet, you are in the sanctifying process. That is a daily thing. That is a Holy Spirit daily working on you to become and conform to the image of Christ. But you can reject sanctification, and that is rejecting the Holy Spirit. Because God wants to work on you all the time. Okay, if you fall into sin, okay, repent. God will forgive you. But if you continue pushing off God, saying, no, I'm going to do my own thing. That is rebellion. And rebellion is the sin as witchcraft in uh, 1 Samuel 15, I believe. But it does say rebellion is as the sin as witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity. Lord, Lord, many, many people shall say in Luke, Lord, Lord, haven't I prophesied in your name, casted out devils in your name, done many works in your name? And he shall say to many, depart from me. I never knew you, worker of iniquity. Stubbornness is as iniquity. How many people are so stubborn? They don't. They want to reject God over and over and over. When God is so merciful on them and bless them, because His mercy and His kindness is that which is supposed to lead us to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should what come to repentance. Okay. So Hebrews six. Let's look at this very clearly. Hebrews New Testament um, is saying literally what are the basics? Okay. This. Therefore. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, meaning there's a doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection. Now, is it saying being perfect? 
No, this is mean maturity. Let us go on to maturity. Not laying again the foundation. Okay, there's a foundation. And we need to understand Jesus Christ is our foundation, but there needs to be a solid foundation. And this is the foundation. Ready? Repentance from dead works. Faith toward God. The doctrine of baptisms. That's plural. Okay, because there's two baptisms. Water and spirit. Baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the blood covenant of God. And laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. Wow. So the basics, the elementary school teachings of doctrine of Christ is repentance from dead works, faith toward God's doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands and resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Huh. How are we going to get past that? By God, if God permits it. So let's go off of the three things. This is the Holy Covenant of being born again, guys. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name of water, and receive the Holy Ghost. Baptism, Jesus himself said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned or is already condemned. Guys, baptism in itself literally means submerged in water. So when you say people get sprinkled, no, it's not about a sprinkling. It's not about a christening as the Catholics do, which are under a strong delusion, demonic doctrine. It is the doctrine of Christ, which is the basics. And this we will continue to grow in maturity that God wants every child of God to grow up someday as your parents do eventually want you to grow up and move out. God is wanting to grow you in holiness, in the fear of God, and in the trusting in faith in Christ Jesus. Acts 2.38 declares, Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. He says, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sin, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Guys, I hope that you have gotten something new from this. I pray in Jesus' name that you receive divine revelation from the Spirit Almighty God to you today. Because today is the day of salvation. Um, seek the Lord while there is still yet time. We are not yet raptured, but I do believe it's very soon. I hope this uplifted you, encouraged you, blessed you. Hope they brought clarity on things that maybe I haven't talked about specifically. And yeah, be blessed in Jesus' name because he's coming soon and I'm so excited. He is my Lord, he is my Savior, and I don't want to just profess him as Lord. I want him to be Lord of my life in every single thing that I do. For he is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb of God. God bless you all in Jesus' name.